Shell of D.T. fills Mosul nearly a year after Iraqi city freed from I.S.I.S. Mosul, Iraq, nearly a year after Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al Abadi declared this war devastated city liberated from the Islamic State, a putrid odor still fills the air from thousands of corpses left in the rubble. The bodies of both civilians and Islamic State militants can be found throughout Mosul, once Iraq's second largest city, abandoned and bombed out buildings tossed in roadside rubbish heaps or discarded in and around the Tigris River. The sight and smell of these corpses is a constant reminder of our darkest days, said A. Albthanoun, 26, a pharmacy assistant who now helps neighbors clear debris. A large number of bodies are scattered in the houses, gardens, squares and even in some of our mosques. Ahead of the May 12 parliamentary elections. Candidates here plant their campaign banners atop piles of brick and stones, most from ancient buildings now destroyed. The politicians are holding electioneering feasts on top of the bodies, said Shaab Ahmed, 28, who lives in the Bablagash district, where most working age males were tombstone engravers before the Islamic State invaded the city in June 2014. About 100,000 people once lived in Mosul's one square mile old city before the Islamic State, also known as ISIS, occupied the neighborhood. The United Nations estimates that more than 90% of the district was demolished in the fighting. I've spent my whole life in the old city. And while there are many historic buildings officials need to preserve and protect, the government should do something to help the volunteers who have been working so hard to clear the corpses out of this neighborhood. Ahmed said. The task of removing the bodies is dangerous. Often the bodies of ISIS fighters are just dumped in a place. And when we come to lift and remove them, we find they're still strapped to explosive vests or there are bombs hidden in the piles of corpses, said Omar Mohammed, 30, an old Mosul resident. We are all vexed with how to deal with the bodies, said Ma and Al Jamal, 26, a physician at Nineveh Medical College in Mosul. The residents themselves are applying some sort of quarantine, but some have been injured from hidden explosives. The decomposing bodies also present health problems. The World Health Organization determined that those living downstream from the city are at risk of gastroenteritis from partially treated water that had been exposed to the bodies. We are lucky that the main supply of Mosel's drinking water from the Tigris is located far north of the city, Al Jamal said. The United Nations held a workshop here in March with officials and residents to come up with a plan to remove what it estimates to be 8 million tons of conflict debris. The volume of rubble is equivalent to three massive piles the size of the Great Pyramid of Giza, according to the UN unplanned disposal of debris can create serious health and environmental risks and burdensome economic liabilities in the future, said Hussein Parto. One an environment program manager working with the Mosul municipality to develop a strategy for rubble clearance. Sror al Hosseini, 23, a nurse in Mosul, isn't waiting for the government to remove the bodies left on the ground and inside demolished homes in her neighborhood. She led her team of 30 volunteers to pull out the dead from the dirt and debris and place them in white plastic sacks. We gathered 52 bodies here and then the municipality takes them to be dumped, Al Hosseini said in a phone interview April 19, after spending the day retrieving the dead from a district in the old city that saw some of the fiercest battles between government troops and ISIS militants. Al Hosseini's mission began after her 14 year old sister Nibras was killed in last year's fighting. Her father died of a heart attack shortly after an airstrike. I promised the security forces to work for them as a nurse if they would help me bury my sister," said Al Hosseini, who now trains others in safe removal. The training includes the use of protective gear, including gloves and masks, and how to treat scorpion stings, a common hazard when removing bodies from the charred remains of the homes and shops of the ancient city. The area smell of death. It's awful, but we have gotten used to it," Al Hosseini said. She said city officials suggested letting stray dogs eat the bodies. There are lots of rats and cats, but no dogs. I told them there were not enough dogs to eat the corpses. There are thousands of bodies. The Prime Minister has said the civilian death toll in Mosul was almost 1,300. 
but that number was challenged by independent monitoring groups and the Associated Press, which estimated in December that as many as 11,000 civilians died between October 2016 and July 2017. Al Hosseini and her volunteers have removed 860 bodies so far. In many ways I'm doing this work in memory of my sister and my father, Al Hosseini said. Dad taught me that actively caring for others is the best answer to the atrocities of the Islamic State. Nabil reported from Istanbul, work after from Cairo. More, six images tell story of Mosul's destruction more, Mosul, corpses, booby traps and snipers are everywhere in devastated city more, Iraqi forces hoist flag over Mosul as fighting continues.